this morning we're going to be at Jeremiah, in chapter number 9, and we're going to look at verse 23, and then we'll go into chapter 10 and probably go down through about verse number 13. Now, uh, we're going to look in a, in a little bit at the ark, but before we get to there, we're going to see this passage here. That Jeremiah is speaking. He said, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Now, you want to talk about a blessing. Is to know God, and that's what life is about. And, you know, just think of where we would be if he hadn't came seeking us. I mean, think about that for just a moment. You know, we get so caught up in our routine and everything that goes on, we tend to forget that God came looking for us. You know, we could have been born in any other country. Right. We could be some of those people out in tribes out in the jungles right now. Could have been us. It's them. It could have easily been us. And yet God has us here. And, and what a blessing it is to know Him. And that's what He says. Let him that gloryeth in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise love and kindness, judgment and righteousness. Now look at these attributes that the Lord has here. Now we've seen... All of this uh, laid out through uh, for us in the Word of God, His love and kindness. Well, no greater love hath any man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. No greater love <coughs> have we ever seen than see God's Son die on the cross for our sins. His love and kindness has been bestowed upon us in mighty ways, and it is all the time. If we got what we deserve, hey, we wouldn't be sitting in here a nice air-conditioned room, they would be in hell. I mean, that's just what we would be if we got what we deserve. Yep. But His love and kindness, even when we fail Him on a daily basis, His love and kindness is the same. I'm glad God doesn't change. Then He talks about His judgment. And this is the Lord talking about His judgment. Well, there is that side of God that you sometimes don't ever hear talk from different preachers or uh, you know, everything's feel good and do good, and we need that encouragement. We all do. But you know what? There is another side of God. Amen. Jesus said, except you believe that I am He, you shall die in your sins. Hey, that's from the Lord Himself. He said, so though th there is a part there, there is a judgment of God, and I want to say this, the world hadn't yet <coughs> seen the full wrath of God revealed mm. and coming, but it's coming. There's a lot of folks today that live in a world in their own mind that God does not exist. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so okay. even that fool along with Satan himself is going to bow the knee one day and confess that Jesus Christ is King of Kings Amen. and Lord of Lords to the glory of God the Father. The judgment time is coming. Well, the scripture talks about judgment must first begin at the house of God. And if then he said, if, the, if scarcely the righteous be saved, where shall the sinner of the ungodly appear? In that same text of scripture there. The judgment of God is going to come that is an attribute. And thank God that as we can give our hearts to the Lord, and when God sees us, He sees the blood, we escape the wrath of God. The wrath of God is not going to ever come upon His children. Amen. People think we're going to go halfway. They use that. Some people think we're going to go halfway through the tribulation. And you got your mid-tribs and you got your post-trib saints and all this stuff. Listen, when God couldn't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, why? There were some righteous in there. Amen? He had to get them out. God couldn't destroy the uh, righteous along with the flood. Why? They was righteous people. God prepared an ark. God Amen. got them out. God's right. going to do the same thing. If you read 1 Thessalonians, you'll see 
that he's not going to, it's not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation. But that judgment is coming. And then he says, in righteousness. Well, it's his righteousness. We know that the scripture teaches us that all righteousness is as filthy rags. So he said, let him that glorieth go into this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment. If he's going to exercise, that means he's going to work it. Amen. And he does. He is. The problem is we don't see him working like he works. I wish we could go behind the scenes sometimes, but then again, on the other side, I'm glad we can't go behind the scenes. <coughs> Lord of mercy, I, I, I wish I could sometimes have an inclination. You know, I know uh, Brother Tony and them, the things they're going through, you know, they didn't see it coming. They both of them will tell you, him and Jackie, we never seen this coming. Well, a lot of things happened in our life we didn't see coming. Amen. <laughs> That's right. I mean, I wish I'd have seen that. Liam coming that day to hit me in the head and busted my head wide open. That joker hit me before I knew it. I didn't see it coming. But you know what? It happened. Well, things happen like that. God is exercising. God is working. God knows the ending from the beginning. He said, in the earth. So he's working in this earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised, Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and the Moab and all that utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness. For all these nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are, circum are uncircumcised in their heart. Now I know a lot of this Old Testament has to deal specifically with the nation of Israel but God is in the Old Testament also. Amen. Jesus is in there. There are things we can learn from the Old Testament saints. So here we see these first uh, three classes of people here uh, noted in verse number 23. And of course that's the wise man, the mighty man, and the rich man. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom and of course glory and you're going to see repeated out through here means to shine or to flash forth light or to be boastful to be praised uh, and he says let not that wise man glory in his wisdom now there's been some wise men and they truly are some wise men in this world uh, we was talking uh, some people the other day and, and about cancer and different things like that and I said, well, you know, it's a possibility. I said, I don't know, but it's a possibility that God has sent the cure for cancer in a person. Yet he got aborted, or she got aborted. Could be. I don't know. And it could be the conspiracies say that they covered up because there's too much money to be made and all this stuff. And that very well could be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But the Lord knows. But they are some smart people. And but God says, let no man, let the wise man glory not in his wisdom. Let the wise man glory in his wisdom. Don't do that. And, but what can happen is, and I've seen it, and you've seen it, people lose their minds when they get a little bit older. Hey, you think Ronald Reagan wasn't a smart man? <coughs> Ronald Reagan was a smart man, whether, whether you liked him as president or not, whether you liked him as governor of California or not, whether you liked him as an actor or not, Ronald Reagan was a smart man. Yet when Ronald Reagan died, he didn't even know his wife. Yep. Now, let's bring it home a little closer. A lot of y'all knew right Dr. Ralph Taylor. I knew him growing up. Dr. Ralph, Ralph Taylor, Taylor was a man of this book. That man could quote this word, and he was in it every day. Taught for 40 or 50 years, preached for 40 or 50 years, established W-O-A-K, done a lot of things in this community and around. Yet I remember seeing uh, Miss Taylor about a year before he died. Didn't even know who she was. Listen, don't glory in wisdom because it can go away. Hey, you think about what was it, Nebuchadnezzar, that he ended up out there eating grass like an old cow? 
Amen. Because he didn't listen to what God had said. And I, I know it's in, in 1 Corinthians 1. You know the passage. I'm not even going to turn to it. But you know it talks about. Well, let me just put it up here on the screen. Uh, let's look at it for just a moment. Just a couple of verses. Chapter 1. And we'll look at verse 25. And of course he speaks to these categories of men also in this. This is Paul talking about earlier that the, the preaching of the cross is them that perish foolishness, but unto us it is the power of God that the Greeks seek after wisdom and the Jews seek after a sign. Well, here he says in verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. When you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh now, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Have you ever noticed that? These professors and all these kind of people that think they got God in a box, that they know more than he does, <laughs> there's a heap of them out there. And you cut on your TV or your radio, and there's news networks distribute, uh, this, that goes against the knowledge of God. They think they are smarter than God. You know, as we're sitting here this morning, you got uh, Face the Nation that's coming on. You got a bunch of new stuff that's coming on this morning trying to figure it all out. You know, and, and uh, meet the depressed, as they say. <laughs> meet the Nation. There's all kind of stuff going on as we're speaking. But people think, especially a wise man now, now I don't fall into this category, so... I don't have nothing to worry about here, but these these people, they are people who can do mathematical things. You know people like that. You know of people like that. They're smart. The problem is they trust. They think they have an upper hand because they are some, what some people say, and I said it the other day, and Lisa said, what? They're educated beyond their intelligence. That's right. <laughs> They're just educated beyond their intelligence. They can't Figure out the simple stuff. They've got too much education. But the wise men, he said, uh, not many are called after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And if you went on over into chapter 2, you'd see that the uh, natural man receiveth not the things of the spiritual of God. Of the Spirit of God, their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And let's see if we can get back here in verse 23 of Jeremiah 9. Then he says in this other category, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Well, that is, uh, you know, the man with strength. And, you know, this really speaks to men, but you know what? More and more I find. There's a lot of women consumed with their bodies also. That's right. I ain't gonna go call it no names, but they on TV also, and they their God is their body. And you can follow it. You can follow it. I, I, you know, body exercise profits little. And I know you can look at me, and I wish I was cut and all that. And I could be if I take the time to do it. But I ain't got time for it, amen. Oh. <laughs> but I, I found people that in, in that lifestyle who seven days a week it's their body it's their body it's their body it's their body yep. you know what you look at some of these that, that a lot of them don't live that long i'm just here to tell you i've seen them at 25 and 30 years old in that kind of shape and have heart attacks and die mm -hmm. too much stress yeah on. just too much going on i mean just too much <laughs> worse than that body your strength can depart is all i'm saying don't trust in your strength. And that's what God said. Listen, God had mighty men of valor. Amen. God raised up people. Hey, when, when he moved them out of Egypt, took them to the promised land, they didn't go into the promised land. Then God raised up Joshua. <coughs> Joshua went in, and guess what Joshua did to all those nations around? Come on. Through the hand of God. He used mighty men of valor. They went in and they conquered all these cities and countries if you will and took them over because why god had already promised them that land that was theirs Amen. and so god went in with these mighty men of valor and done it 
These wasn't little old bitty kids. <laughs> These was big guys, but still, you can't trust in your strength. The mighty man, neither let him glory in his might. And I'm here to tell you, you live long enough, your strength is going to deteriorate. <laughs> You're going to get weaker. Uh, you see, for, I, I see guys now that's, you know, in their 60s or 70s, and I can look at them, yeah, everything's failed. <laughs> but I can look, I, I bet you that jungle was a stud when he, back in his day. You can just tell. You know what I mean? You can tell. Anything. But you, you take off the shirt, and you, you can see the old man. Hey? <laughs> I remember the first time I, I noticed, I thought, golly, man. Come on. It's gone. Yeah. Man, it's gone. <laughs> Everything's just gone. You young man, you ain't got to worry about it yet, but it's coming. <laughs> but that glory is going to leave that strength. Don't trust in it. That's all they say. And then, of course, the rich man. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. You know, that's easily said. And it's another thing we don't probably have to deal with too much because uh, we ain't got a whole lot of it. It just kind of comes in and goes out. You know, it's kind of like a press. Just the money comes in, and it right goes. Every, every dollar's got a name, and it just goes out. But there are some who can stock it up, you know. And it's hard for them when they got everything to have to rely on somebody. Yep. It's hard for them. Yep. If a man has the abilities and the resources that say, you know what? And I know it. I worked for this guy one time. Uh, he owns a big farm and. and in Coweta County on the river, on 1,500 acres, and <clears throat> he, he's a surgeon, and he flies back and forth to these hospitals in his helicopter, and he <clears throat> come in one day and he landed, it was on a Friday afternoon, very early, you know, two, three, four o'clock. I said, well, where, where are you headed? He said, well, we're finna go to the airport and get in the plane, we're gonna fly to Denver and eat supper tonight. I said, so wait. <laughs> You know, it'd be nice to have those resources. I ain't gonna lie. But you know, it's hard for God to break through that. That's why Jesus said it's easier for a rich man. Uh, it's harder for a rich man to go through the eye, uh, to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of that needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. Why? They got a hold of it. Got a hold of it, and it's easy for us to have that and have that mentality and, and remember the disciples they said well who then can be saved you know and, and of course you know the rich man that stored up all those goods we have many examples through the word of God here is just another one in the Old Testament let not that rich man glory in his riches but let him that glory now you want to rejoice you remember they went out and uh, the disciples went out and they cast out these demons they were subject unto them through the name of Jesus and Boy, they come back and they was on fire from God for that revival. And they come back and Jesus said, Rejoice not in that, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Amen. That's our rejoicing. That's what it's all about. Amen. That's what life is. It's a good thing. But he said, Let him that glory and glory in this. They understand that they know of me. What greater strength can you have? What greater wisdom can you have? If we look at these three categories there in that verse, the wise man, what better wisdom can you have? The mighty man, what kind of mighty thing can you have that you can call on the name of Jesus, that you can know him? And riches, you won't talk about riches, man. We're rich. Amen. We are rich in this life because we have Jesus. So let him glory in this. Let him shine. Let him be boastful in this that he understandeth and knoweth me. Look, I would love to have a lot of things in this world. I ain't gonna lie about it. I mean, you, uh, you'd lie if you say you didn't. Come on. Who in here, on the side of my voice, would love to have a, just a million dollars sitting in your checking account? I don't see any that says, oh, I don't want that. It wouldn't it, amen. It would. We got some honest people in here, amen. It would be nice. But you know what? We got Jesus. Amen. We're rich in him. Amen. It's it's good to know that. And he says that he knoweth him. 
He said, I am the Lord which exercised. Now, I want to look at, at something here as we go into uh, chapter number 10 here for just a moment. And we're going to see a little bit about the Lord here. We've got just a few more minutes. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth down a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, they fashion it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Now, you know one funny thing that I thought about? Uh, I heard this lady say one time on the radio, she is on a news thing and, and she was talking, it's on a Christian radio network, I'm not going to call a station out because it didn't have nothing to do with them, it's just, she said, you know, everything in, in the Old Testament stuff was, was built with concrete and things like that, they wasn't wood that they go chop down and hammers, I thought, where do you even get that at? But what, what, what you see here is people went and they was crafty. They was good. They were skilled. I mean, uh, Solomon them, they, they hired people. They hired carpenters and, and different things to go out. And they got paid their labor and, and went and cut out the trees. And they even Nehemiah, when he built the wall, he got orders from the king to go cut down trees and build the wall. People knew how to do things. Skilled labor. I'm amazed at the stuff that the Romans was able to do. Hey, them guys were smart. Yeah. What if they had the technology today? Mm. Back then, I mean, these guys, this stuff still standing. People right. had wisdom. But what the problem was, God ain't got a problem with that. He's got a problem when you go and offer these idols. And that's what he's talking about. They go and they, they build these idols. They deck it with silver and with gold. What's the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. They fasten it with nails and hammers that it move not. They are upright like as a palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born. <laughs> they had to pick up their little god and just move it <laughs> from place to place. It says, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good? But let's look at this Old Testament thing here in uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 5. It's when they moved the Ark of the Covenant in, the Philistines had come and stole it. He said, Hear the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Uh, Thus saith the Lord, learn. Wait a minute, that's right back on that. Didn't click on I thought, that ain't sounding right right there now. I, I thought I clicked on first Samuel. <laughs> well, we would have read the same thing there. There it is. The Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod. Well, the Philistines took the ark of God. Now, first of all, the enemy had come in and stole the ark. And so they brought it and they put it in the same house with their little G God. All right? They brought it in the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. Say, so, okay, they took him, Dagon, and they set him in his place again. Set him right by the glory of God. You just can't do that. When they arose early on the morning, on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord at the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands was cut off the, upon the threshold only the stump of Dagon was left to him <laughs> they said you know what something's going on here watch what the priest said therefore neither the priest of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon and asked out of the city on this day but the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them why? Because God's glory was in the wrong place trying to be compared to other gods. He destroyed them and smote them with uh, the emeralds. Even Ashdod and the coast thereof. And watch this now. When the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said the ark of the 
God of Israel, it wasn't their God, see, shall not abide with us. For his hand is so upon us and upon their God and our God. So they sent forth. They said, he's got to go. We don't want God. But you see, God, that's the same thing that happens with people who trust in their riches, who trust in their strength, who trust in uh, their wisdom. They think they, they don't want God. They don't want nothing to do with it. They become that fool has said in his heart that there is no God. You can't put God's glory up. You've got to make a choice. And these people here, they said, you know what? Uh, we'll take Dagon. They said, we'll take Dagon and go. Well, God said, as we'll look back here, and I'll, I'll be done just a second here. Let's look back in uh, where we was in Jeremiah. I know it's here somewhere. There it is. And back in chapter 9, and let's look at verse 10. It says, uh, for the, uh, chapter 10, excuse me, I'm sorry. Something, I'm going to get somebody to run this thing. One of these <laughs> chapter 10 and verse number 10. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, an everlasting king. At his wrath the earth shall tremble and the nations shall be not be able to abide in his indignation. He is the true God. Thus he saith unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. It's going to happen one day. His judgment is going to pour out. He's going to wipe it all out. When we yep. are uh, in that kingdom age, you ain't going to have to worry about seeing these little gods. Because it's going to be Jesus Christ. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. He's going to take care. He is the true God. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the true God. And what greater pleasure, Lord, can we have than to know that we know you and you know us. In Jesus' name, amen.